Hi guys! I just have to show you this before I start because I'm not sure if she's gonna stay. <laughs> she's already standing up. There's Momo. Momo. <laughs> she's barely leaving me any room on the seat, but we'll see how it goes. So hi, welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Garmin and this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Um, before I start, I never do this, but I have to show you my mug. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm never one of those podcasters like, oh, I'm drinking this from this cup. I mean, <laughs> I always find it so funny, but... Um, yeah, I just got a new cup this morning. It's very shiny. Um, by Scapius, who is the Dutch yarn company I work with. Their logo is right here. And it says a, um, it has a really cute poem on here. And it's to celebrate their 165th birthday. And yeah, it's just really, really cute. And I have to fill it with tea for an Instagram reel that I just um, recorded. And I want to drink it before it gets cold. <laughs> so, hi! Um, my bangs are getting a little bit too long. Should probably cut them. Um, but yes, I hope you are well. Um, I know that today is a very hectic day. It's uh, November 4th election day was two days ago and even though I'm in the Netherlands uh, I'm feeling the nervousness right here um, <laughs> and um, yeah I just um, I hope you're all hanging in there and things will be all right and I'm here to distract you with some knitting as I have lots to show you and did you spot my new friend there? <laughs> so uh, here I keep my progress board. I'm getting much better at pointing at things in the, in the screen. And here is my new fluffy friend. Um, I'm not sure if he has a name. Uh, I made him for Inside Crochet. And, and I'll show you up close in a bit. Uh, so I made it for Inside Crochet for this issue with the gorgeous uh, crochet sweater on the front by Nomad Stitches. And oh, my bangs are really getting <laughs> too long. Um, and my Yeti plushie is in there as well. This is the second of my three masterclass columns. Uh, I had one column in the last issue and this is issue number 129 and uh, this master class is about combining yarns and in the first master class so from issue 128 I talked about combining uh, different yarn weights so um, I combined a thicker and a thinner yarn to have a kind of sheer and solid effect in a shawl and here I'm talking about mixing um, smooth yarn with fluffy yarn. So you can see my friendly fox plushie, which was up there for the last couple episodes. And it's right beside me, so I can show you this one. Um, and in the pattern, I mean, the, the master class pattern is the adorable Yeti. Um, um, <laughs> what was the idea? Oh yeah, instead of abominable snowman, it's an adorable slow snowman. <laughs> but he's called Yeti Plushie. Um, and I'll just get him up here. He's quite sizable. <laughs> See? He's quite big. Um, so I used Escape His Furry Tails. And Scapius Katona. And I think that's all. Yes. 
So isn't he cute? His body, arms and legs are all furry tails and the ears as well. And then details with Katona. Little claws. Oh, I just think he's so cute. Um, yeah. And so he's in Inside Crochet number 129. And you can get this issue online as well. You can get it a, a digital issue, so kind of a PDF download. Um, I think they are on Pocket Max. Uh, Pocket Max probably dot uco dot uco dot co dot uk and and you know i've subscribed to the hard copy issues because i just these magazines are really like if you're into crochet this is what you should get because um you know you have molly makes and you have simply crochet uh, molly makes is kind of you know everything. Um, you have clay crafts, paper crafts, embroidery, knitting, crochet, macrame, everything. Uh, baking. Uh, and then simply crochet is all about crochet but it's relatively simple. So if you're a beginner, um, simply crochet is um, a really good magazine. But if you're like really really into crochet and um, you want some more advanced patterns, get this one. Um, yeah, it's just really nice. And uh, here in the Netherlands, they don't have, um, I mean, the shops don't sell the hard copy. So I just um, um, bought a subscription from them. And um, yeah, but you can get the digital copy as well. Uh, even when, you know, you can get the digital copies of previous issues as well. Um, and I will get the copyright for this pattern back in a couple of months and then I will be able to pu publish it myself, but, um, you know, <laughs> it might still take a while because, um, I want, um, it's written in UK terms and I want every pattern that I publish to also have US terms, um, and then also have a Dutch version, so it might take a while. But isn't he cute? <laughs> and talking about publications, um, I just published my first ebook and I printed the first couple pages. Um, this is what it looks like. And I'm not sure if the printer was kind of out of ink uh, because I um, I designed on um, I designed it on Canva, which was Canva is just a game changer. Um, I uploaded a short video on my Patreon page if you're interested in um, how I did that. And uh, the background is supposed to be light gray, <laughs> but it's not really showing. But um, yes, this is the front page, the Subtle Sock Collection. And you've heard me talk about it many times. It includes four color work patterns. Um, these are the yarns that I use, so you get all of the information if you want to make the exact same socks. Um, and I just added some leaf graphics throughout, um, and they are the same leaf graphics that I used to design my, um, logo. And these are the first socks boom and yeah i just i just um yeah <laughs> i don't know what to say um i launched the subtle sock collection last sunday which was november 1st and it went really well thank you all so so much for your purchases uh and for your enthusiasm i'm so so grateful uh, I'm happy that you guys like it so much. And uh, so I have four color work patterns in here. Uh, they are available in six adult sizes. And um, so 
from a women's small to a men's large, you could say. Uh, it's from European shoe size 35 to 47. Um, so yeah, that's quite quite a large size range. Um, and if you want to make it for kids, you could um, you could just make the length shorter. Uh, because the circumference, you know, the circumference is more or less the same, but the length is where it's at. So um, if you have a sock ruler or something like that, then uh, you might be able to figure out um, this pattern for kids' sizes. But um, yeah, I have a color work chart in there. The pattern is all written out. I have a picture for the stripy gusset. Um, this is the only picture that is uh, in the ebook uh, next to the um, just finished project. <laughs> Momo is, I don't know, snoring or moaning in her sleep. Uh, so this is the only picture that's in there besides all of the finished object pictures, uh, just to kind of, um, you know, make it a little bit more printer friendly. I think I have five photos in there. No, six photos. I don't know. Um, yeah, and you can just choose which pages you want to print out. And if you purchase the uh, ebook, you will also get the downloads for all of the single PDFs. So um, yeah, if you know, okay, I'm going to do this pattern first and you don't want to check which pages those are in the ebook, you can just click on that PDF, print that out, um, and you're good to go. And it's available in English and in Dutch. And yeah, I'm just so, so happy with how it went. And you can still get a 30% discount on the ebook with code MOMO, that's uh, capitals M-O-M-O, -O, which is the name of this little kitty on my seat and and the code is valid until november 15th so that's still a week i think so let's get into what i have been knitting so last time you saw my star wars hat which i still need to weave in the other ends for the star wars hat and this hat that I finished and the pattern for this hat which is called the home hat uh, and this is the same pattern will be out next week November 12th so on a Thursday it will be out for free on my blog um, and it's called the home hat because uh, I was toying with um, Kind of like travel inspired names because the yarn I used is Scapius Metropolis and I used the same yarn for my um, colorwork sweater early, uh, earlier this year and I called that the around the world sweater because um, you know we all want to be traveling right now but we can still travel around the world via this yarn <laughs> but um, <laughs> I know it's super cheesy but uh, now it just didn't seem right to um, call it a travel inspired name. I was uh, thinking of like the globe trotter hat, even though I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. <laughs> uh, or the wanderlust hat, but I'm sure there are many patterns called wanderlust uh, because it's such a hipster word. Uh, so I'm calling it the home hat because in a world where we cannot travel right now, let's celebrate home because home really is home sweet home. It's our little safe haven in all of this chaos. And, uh, you know, I am aware that probably a lot of people don't have a place they can call home. Um, but yes, let's celebrate just being at home and being safe. Um, and yes, the pattern is coming next week. And then um, I'm going to show you something that is not a hat. Shocking. <laughs> I managed to distract, distract myself again. 
<laughs> from what I needed to do. So, um, I finished my second um, One Blink For Yes sock. Um, this was my Christmas sock pattern from last year. Uh, and One Blink For Yes is a reference to Stranger Things Season 1, uh, where um, someone communicates through twinkling Christmas lights um, that a monster is coming and that the other person should run. And in the scene, so I'm not sure if you all have watched Stranger Things, but um, if you haven't, you should. <laughs> it's, uh, it's become my favorite series and I'm now re-watching season three. Um, so anyway, there is this wall with, um, with twinkling Christmas lights and um, the person, right, let's just call it by the character's name, Joyce, has um, painted all of the alphabet letters on the wall, one for each light bulb, and then a person coming communicates with her through the light bulbs, telling her to run. <laughs> so, I guess they're kind of Halloween appropriate appropriate as well but yeah I thought they were really fun and um, yeah so you could customize this um, to be not Stranger Things themed you could um, uh, because the uh, letters are added later on so you just you uh, knit the light bulbs um, and the light bulb string uh, with color work and then uh, you embroider the letters later on and I embroidered run but you can most definitely um, embroider happy holidays or a person's name or yeah <laughs> I just uh, yeah I just really like these and so I made the first sock last year and actually for the pattern pictures, I used one of my uh, testers, who is Carrie from Showreel Studios, and she had some sock kits for this pattern. And uh, yeah, I had knit this sock up until here. And this week I just decided to finish it. So on Sunday, I think, I started and then I finished it. Um, yesterday. It was a lot of ends to weave in. <laughs> so beware of that. <clears throat> but yeah, I just uh, think they're really nice and I finally get to wear them. So uh, the pattern is in my Ravelry store. They are called the One Blink for Yes Socks. Um, oh, I forgot to mention that. So the person communicates through the Christmas lights and when they first find out that there's someone on the other end, they say, okay, one blank for yes, two blanks for no. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really fun series. Go and watch it. So those are my socks that I finally finished. And then the gift nets. Okay, so I have some progress. Uh, on project number three, so last time I showed you that I finished one headband, uh, which is the Vanessa headband pattern by Nancy Ritchie. And I completed the second one. So this was actually the first one that I cast on. Uh, but while I was working on this, I was worrying that the uh, mohair might be too itchy for the uh, recipient. Um, even though I don't find it itchy at all, especially around the, you know, on my head and my ears. Uh, so I made a second one in my own hand spun wool and alpaca blend. Uh, yes, yeah, so I just finished this. I just did the Kitchener seam right before I started this video. Here it is. Um, you can kind of see where the seam is because I didn't, um, 
really finish in pattern so there is a couple more stockinette bros in between um yeah so i'm, I'm just gonna let her choose uh to see which one that she wants and yeah <laughs> Uh, then everybody's happy. I think I'm gonna keep the other one that she doesn't choose because I like both uh, And the yarn that I used for this one is Right up here. It's a uh, woolen vine in uh, her footsie base in the indoorsy colorway and um, Some gray mohair that I hand dyed myself from acorns that I collected during an autumn walk last year and uh, and then I added some iron to modify the color. It's so much fun, really. Uh, acorns and iron are how they used to make uh, ink for writing um, way, way back when regular ink didn't exist yet. I'm not sure when. Not a historian. <laughs> All right, so let's fill in my progress. So the... <laughs> luxury headband <laughs> so supposed to be a luxurious headband is finished there ta-da three projects done I really need to get a move on but my next project might also uh, get me a little bit further with my progress. Oh, I really don't know what to say um, So the fourth hat I'm calling the hat band a hat is the pink hat which is for One of my sisters-in-law Who really likes pink and this is the yarn that I am using for her um, together with some white Aran. So they are both Aran weight yarns and I wanted to uh, make a brioche hat for her and I know that last time I said that I was probably going to do um, the other color hats first because I was kind of in the groove but then I thought what if I can't do the brioche and <laughs> I'm gonna need to find a different different hat pattern uh, so just uh, let's get it out of the way <laughs> so um, I went on Ravelry and I thought I was going to do a brioche hat pattern by Leslie and Robinson who is knit graffiti um, she's amazing I have a craftsy class of hers um, craftsy which then became blueprint which is now craftsy again um, her Prophecy class is called Brioche Lace, I think. Um, she's amazing. Um, but then her hat patterns uh, were not Aaron weight. They were DK weight. So I thought, ooh, not sure if I'm going to pull that off because uh, this is 166 meters and uh, I would just not have enough meterage for her hat pattern, even though I might not need as much as with DK Wait. But uh, I decided to make it easy on myself and uh, search for an Aran weight brioche pattern instead. So I found the Waiting to Flower hat pattern by Kirsten Kapoor, who um, sounds very familiar. I think maybe Amy from the Stranded Dye Works podcast uh, knit something from her because Kirsten Kapoor just such a familiar name. <laughs> uh, she's through the loops on Instagram and yeah her waiting to flower hat was just exactly what I wanted. I wanted a kind of flowery um, hat pattern and uh, the one that I was looking at before was a prairie lace hat um, which also kind of has brioche leaves on there. So I um, um, I'm just going to show you because it is gorgeous. Um, this is, sorry for the clinking needles, this is the hat so far. And you can see the flower here. There are four on the hat. Oh, it 
just love it and um, I am kind of sad that the weight is getting more um, <laughs> screen time that's not the right word uh, you can see the white more than you can see the pink uh, but then you know if you turn it over um, if you see the pink side then the flower isn't as visible so I'm happy with my choice but still um, I wish I could have more pink but uh, I will be adding the um, brim in this yarn so hopefully that will do uh, you might be wondering why are you not knitting the brim first uh, that is why um, that's because I think I'm gonna be able to play yarn chicken with this even though I still have quite a bit left uh, but in the pattern it says you need one skein of each color and the yarn that she uses has 190 meters per 100 grams and this is 166 meters per 100 grams so yeah I just didn't want to risk it I cast on um, I did I did cast on the ribbing first um, but then when I came to the brioche I found that the gauge was just too loose so that I would have to go down a needle size um, and then I would have to undo the whole ribbing so I thought okay let's just do a provisional cast on which is this um, green that you see so that won't be in the hat so the provisional cast on is a crochet chain and you pick up stitches through the bumps on the back the professional cast on um, you know I find it a little bit tricky and if it wasn't this big uh, like this these many stitches I would have probably used uh, the Judy's magic cast on for socks because that's another cast on that lets you uh, cast on for stitches in both ways um, so up and then down uh, but then you would have another needle hanging here and you know for the entire project and then they would be clanking all the time and yeah I, ju I just thought let's take it easy and do provisional cast on for now and the brioche is going pretty well uh, even though at times I am not sure how to count um, I think you just divide it by two but um, um, yeah there were a couple of times where I had to look at the pattern pictures very closely because I wasn't sure if I did enough uh, like resting rows in between the increases and decreases yeah and it's looking very short <laughs> but uh, <laughs> And it looks ridiculous when I have it on because <laughs> oh actually it doesn't look too bad <laughs> maybe it was in my head um so yeah I only have a bit to go uh, there's a couple more rounds in the pattern but it's decreasing pretty fast and then I'll have all of this to do a um, brim and I hope to make it long enough so that I can have a fold over brim because uh, this is very loose even though I'm knitting it with um, smaller needles than the pattern says so the pattern says um, not sure what the US size is but it's a uh, 5.5 millimeter 5.5 millimeter so I did that but then the gauge was like but I'm a really loose knitter um, so I changed to 4.5 which I think is like a US 5 I'm not sure um, oh I can check oh it's a US 7 and in the pattern they use a US 9 okay this is a very handy sheet both um, metric and US sizes. Uh, so yeah, um, if you're a loose knitter, be aware that um, you might want to use smaller needles. Um, I didn't do a gauge swatch because honestly, a brioche 
gauge swatch in the round, I might just as well cast on for the hat already. And um, this went by really, really quickly. I think that I had this done within a day. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited to finish up this crown and then do the ribbing. So excited! Um, so what do you say? Um, how much percentage is this of a hat? I think it's more than 50%, even though the ribbing is going to be quite substantial. So I'm saying 60%, maybe even 70. Let's do 70. Okay. Um, so 70%. Let's mark that on my board. 70%. That's about there. There. Looking good. Getting there. Getting there. Right. <sighs> I really don't want to be reminded <laughs> how few weeks it is until Christmas. But then again, this pattern or this hat went by like that. So I'm pretty confident that I can still get it done. Yeah, and I am actually excited to start a brioche hat, hat um, in fingering weight because I now know how easy it is. Um, I always thought that once you, um, once you start a fabric or, you know, a work in progress uh, with one color, and not brioche, you cannot change to brioche, but you can. So I don't know why I was thinking that. Yeah, but I'm pleased that the brioche hat is going so well. And I am looking at colors for the next color work hats, which is going to be for two men. And I'm trying to not go as colorful. Uh, so perhaps less colors and a bit more muted. So I'm looking at blues. These are the same blues that I used for this hat, um, which is number five and number 11 from Scapius Metropolis. I'm also looking at this brown. It's kind of like a rusty brown, which is Valencia, as if you can see it from that distance, uh, which is colorway 62. Um, I have a scrap left of Molton, which is 17. Hmm. Um, I would love to get a yellow in there, but this might be too bright. I would also love to use some of this yarn, which is West Yorkshire Spinners. I have a bunch of these, uh, not one from this color, but um, yeah, I have a lot of sock yarn stash. So I'm hoping to use up some of that. And then I have this really dark one as well. Hmm. Not quite sure if I'm feeling it, but um, yeah, and I have a little bit left of my all time favorite color, which is uh, 26 Deepak. It's oh, <laughs> it's just the most beautiful dark, like army green, I mean, kind of a dark olive, or maybe uh, I don't know how you would say this but it's a, a yellowy green, but very dark, which I used for, I used it for this design. So the Brice design from the Silk Sock collection, I used it for the pattern color and then the um, heels, toes and cuffs. It's a beautiful colorway. Um, 
so yeah I am going to be playing some more with colors and you'll see next time and I'm really liking this actually to have accountability and I mean with hats you get a lot done quickly because they are really small projects um, so it's just really satisfying and I might not want to stop after <laughs> after the hats that I still need to do so we will see but I'm really happy with the hats that I've done so far so the <laughs> three hats here and then the two headbands and then Ta -da! <laughs> oh, I wish I could do that as the thumbnail, but I can't because it's secret. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think I'm not going to keep you any longer. So thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for your lovely, lovely comments. I love reading them, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!